channel now to Unbreakable. It's a new feature-length documentary that tells the extraordinary story of the adventurer Mark Pollock. Mark was the man who was blinded at 22 but still made it to the South Pole and was then paralysed in an accident but has now gone on to push the boundaries of scientific research into spinal injuries and has also founded the Worldwide Lifestyle Run in the Dark fundraiser. Well, I'm joined now by Mark and by the successful Irish filmmaker Ross Whitaker, who has made this documentary. Thank you both very much indeed for coming into us uh, today. I know you're launching the film tonight on the lighthouse and um, so I can imagine how busy you are but let's take a look first at a clip of the uh, film Do you like that? You're aiming to be the first blind person to get to the South Pole He was the essence of happiness <laughs> There's this guy who can't see and he's just in love with the world it's my 10th anniversary of going blind. Going to the South Pole really marked the journey that I'd been on from zero confidence to being able to deal with it and move on. You've got to do these things in life because you never know what will happen. I remember looking, it was like almost in slow motion, just seeing Mark falling down. My phone rang. Mark's had an accident and he has hurt his back. God, it's an extraordinary film. I just watched it last night. It, it, uh, this is all from the early stages of the film, really, that, that begin to tell your story, Mark. But just, just fill viewers in. You, you, had, um, you were born with poor eyesight. Yeah, I was born very short-sighted, um, and that gives you a tendency to have detached retinas, so you can't play contact sports. If you get a knock in the head, you could have a, a detached retinas. Some boxers have detached retinas, but uh, if you're short-sighted, there's no reason why particularly uh, you should lose your sight. But um, I lost sight of my right eye when I was five, and then my good eye when I was 22, uh, just at the end of university. And, um, and as I said in the film, everything was ahead of you at that point. You were very involved in sporting and rowing, athletics. You had a, a job lined up for you in the city of London. Yeah, and like, everything like changed. Life, life, was, life was going really, really well for a 22-year-old just coming out of university in the late 90s. You know, there were no recessions. The Celtic Tiger was just taking off jobs galore. So life was going really, really well for me. And it changed in the space of, of two weeks. And over the next 10, 12 years, I rebuilt and found a new identity back in sport. I got a job. I went back to college and, and life had changed from a complete disaster losing my sight to to being really very exciting again. I was racing all around the world, I had a great motivational speaking business and and life was really powering ahead. And then twenty ten? Well then just just like in the in the clip clip then, you know, I, I was someone who was out there doing things and my dad always used to say to me, you know, you gotta get out there and do these things because you never know what might happen and uh, I used to say that that line often and then something did happen and I, I fell from a second story window and broke my back just over four years ago and I'm back rebuilding, refinding my identity and, and now trying to find a cure for paralysis. It's an extraordinary thing, really, to, to have such two such enormous blows. But, Ross, what's brilliant about the film is you have footage that takes Mark right back to his childhood. You have footage of him running around in shorts and little pair of glasses. But you were with Mark through a lot of what he experienced. Yeah, well, <clears throat> what actually happened was we were in the, in the process of making another documentary when the accident happened. So what's really unusual is to have, you know, a lot of these films will be looking backwards. Mm. Whereas we're actually in the present moment almost throughout. So, you know, we have footage of Mark as a child. We have footage of Mark training to go to the South Pole. So you get to kind of see all of the story. So you get to witness it in, in the present moment, which I think is sort of sucks viewers in a lot more. Oh, it's very powerful, yeah. yeah. And the, the other thing, you were there as, I mean, I have to say, one of the heroes of the film. You're very much a hero, but Simone, you're... Your girlfriend, your fiance, she is a phenomenal character, and you've a load of her reaction to to getting the bad news about your accident at that time, of her by your bedside. You were in Stoke Mandeville for for a long time, weren't you? Yeah, I was in in Stoke Mandeville. I, ha I had the accident in Eng England, and I was in Stoke Mandeville, which is the first spinal unit in the world. So it was a um, 
was fortunate to be close to that hospital. Um, but but Simon, who who wasn't with me whenever the accident happened, but she came from Ireland over to England within 12 hours, and she stayed there for the eight months that I was in England, and then she was by my bedside for the further eight months when I was in hospital here in in Ireland. So, you know, what I notice about spinal cord injury, and I, and I hope what Ross has managed to capture is that um, Simon's role in this, in, in my ability to to get back out there and to start exploring the possibility of a cure. I'm not doing it on my own. Simon has been very much a part of that uh, support and partnership in mm. in this exploration and our friends and our family and those thousands of people who are running That's in, in the lifestyle, running in the dark. That's Simon there we're seeing in the shot and it's you uh, using some of the... the Robotic legs. What do you call it? The robotic legs, yeah. yeah. Kind of an exoskeleton almost, isn't it? Absolutely. And I mean, that, that, that thing is like a first generation mobile phone, but as a first generation piece of technology, it, it's pretty good. I've been able to walk over 400,000 steps in the, last, uh, in the last couple of years, and now we're adding in other interventions to try and find this elusive cure. But so that's where you are. You're at the cutting edge, mm -hmm. really, of research into dealing, living with spinal injuries, as well, I suppose, as the research that's going on into reversing spinal injuries. But th this is very much about how to live as normal a life as possible with one. Yeah, and I, I think there are two parts to it. You know, trying to find a cure is very much in the hope category, and we're actively pursuing that hope to find a cure. But the first step, and I'm conscious that there are people with spinal injuries who just are in hospital right now, and for me the first part was about accepting the starting point, um, that I was paralysed, that there is no cure, that there is a life to live in a wheelchair and a very meaningful life, and having those relationships with Simon, my fiance, and getting out there and socialising again. But um, we're running a twin track approach, which, which is accepting the reality and hoping for something better. And I think and I hope that, that Ross, because we're such good friends, um, myself and Simon have been very comfortable having Ross following us around and, and telling that story of our the tension between acceptance and hope as we as we try to navigate our way through this. But it, it simply wouldn't have happened if Ross was just a commercial documentary guy. Yeah, dip in, dip out. I mean, that's yeah. so clear from the film, Ross. You've obviously got a, a huge relationship there. Yeah, and it makes for, I think, a, a much more compelling story to actually be in the room with people when, when things are happening, you know. And, and ultimately, it's, I think it's quite uplifting because you're following them as they go through this process and they seek these cures and they meet these inspiring people and they bring it all together. And ultimately, I think that's just really kind of an exciting Thing. Yeah. So being there in the room with people, I think, just makes for a much more immediate kind of story. And it's not kind of preachy or it's not kind of like interviews telling you all about the science. No, it's there's no kind of slow, it. sad music. Yeah, I mean, you know? it really, it's real. It's very straight. It's very honest. But it is very moving. We have another uh, full time clip, actually. We might take a, a look at this. I can look at this in two ways. I can either hope and seek out a cure. Or I can spend my life getting on and living my life. You're the best. <laughs> He's realised the voice that he has and his ability to move people. If I just sat in my wheelchair, I'd be giving up completely. Just looking at that, it is phenomenal what you have achieved and what you have, have been through to come out with an attitude like you have. I mean, you must have so much to, to, to teach other people. Well, you... I think if I get to that stage where I think I've got, you know, I've arrived, then it's 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 all over. But you know what what what's really important here is spinal spinal injuries. Ireland just did some research, and seventy five percent of people with spinal injury in, in this country never work again for a whole host of support reasons, connections, networks, backups. In Switzerland, eighty percent of people do work. It's completely the other way around, and I'm very conscious that I do have Simon by my bedside with me on this journey. I do have friends, I do have Ross who's able to articulate and tell this story. I've got backup. So I've I've got a chance and it's important for me to um it's important for me to take this opportunity to go to America, to Switzerland, around the world. But eventually we want to bring this stuff back here. We want to get Ireland to be a hub for spinal injuries research and we're starting to move towards that. So I'm not I'm not an inspiration because I uh, because I'm uniquely positioned if i am uniquely positioned it's because i've got got the the supports and the backup to do it but we also that comes with a responsibility and we hope this film 
will help to get paralysis on the agenda. Um, because since Christopher Reeve died, so it hasn't act, had that. It's slipped off the yeah. agenda. We've got and, to get it back on. And you're taking the film, Ross, now on tour around the country. Tell me what, what you're going to do with it. Yeah, so t um, tomorrow night is the opening night in the lighthouse, but actually it's sold out. So it's already proven to be quite popular. Great. It's sold out. Yay, about two weeks in <laughs> advance, actually, incredibly. And then Saturday night, we have a Q&A as well with, with Mark and, and, and I and Simon and actually Simon that also trains uh, with Mark. And that's selling really well. And then we're bringing it to kind of like Killarney, Cork, Waterford, Thurles, Burr, and so on and so forth over the next few weeks. So we'll be going, we'll be doing Q&As. It's kind of a more event-based approach. And we'll be there to talk to people. And we're really hoping people sort of come out, meet Mark, see what it's all about. And I think it's going to be like a good evening out, you know, a bit of a, yeah, a, bit of a chat. And that I mean, it is mind-blowing, that film just Thanks. what can be achieved because yeah. you know when you see in the early days in Stoke Mandeville and you know you're very down you're you're very defeated having yeah. kind of been and you turn it around so quickly well this is i hope what's in the in the film you know as i said there is no cure for paralysis but we are actually starting to meet some of the people around the world who who are willing to talk to us and work with us out of ireland we're going over to California and we brought the robotic legs back and then we brought them back over to California to LA. We brought them to a scientist, we put a collaborative project together. We're actually starting to make a difference. So, you know, this is, there's no doubt there is misery in this film, right? Yeah, a little but, bit. But I hope by the end of it that the message will be there that, that with, the right, with the right backing and going in the right direction, it's exciting, you know, it's, yeah. it's not way out there in the future that we're starting to see the potential for victories over paralysis. Um, it's, it's close. Mm. Yeah, well, listen, congratulations, both of you, on it. And nice. uh, Ross, is there a website or something that people want to find out the uh, yeah, details of? There is, markpollockfilm.com, and on there you have the trailer and all the screenings. You can just click through and, and see where they all are. So people can very easily find out where it's going to be showing near to them, because we'll be everywhere. Brilliant. So, so Mark pollockfilm.com. That's it. Great. Well, listen, Mark Ross, thanks a million for coming into us and the very best of luck now with uh, taking the film out and about. Thank thanks, you. Stephen. Thanks.